Hey up everyone, welcome back again to the Rugby League History Channel. I just did a video about five minutes ago and I'm back again already. Um, welcome to me, Rugby League History Noobty of the Week Award, Episode 8. This is a segment I really enjoy, where I go through some of the daft things that people have said throughout the week. Some of the daft things that players have done, it can be anything daft associated with Rugby League. And the winner gets the Noobty of the Week Award. Now, um, I've had a lot of positive feedback about this um, particular video series that I do and people seem to get a bit of a laugh out of it. There's been quite a lot of nominees this week. Um, lots of daft things have been said, lots of daft things have been done. But, as always, I always start off with the, the winner and then work down through just to the nominees. Um, so, there was quite a lot of nominations this week. But, after... Going through a few of them, I decided to give this week's Nubdi of the Week award to Philip Wood. And he posted on Fox League saying, Question NRL, with 20 minutes to go, why did the league laddie already have the Roosters as a win and on 24 points and up to third position? A little bit presumptuous, don't you think? I always thought the ladder was supposed to be updated after the game. Money talks, I guess. And then about 20 people went, Probably a live ladder you were looking at, and then in that particular type of ravine, it's a live ladder. It's not the actual full-time ladder. And then someone else said, it's called a live ladder, and they do it every game. It shows where the teams will be if the scores don't change. And then Philip Wood went on to say, oh, that's not true, that can't be right. It's corruption by the NRL. They want Eastern Suburbs to do the three-peat, all this keeper, and I'm going... There's about 30 people seeing it's a live ladder. They had it last week in the Parramatta match against South. South Sydney scored the first try and then and, all the, and, and already on the live ladder, it showed this is where South are going to be if they win this game. It doesn't mean that the NRL has money on South or they have money on East to win a match. It's a live ladder. So for that particular person, Mr. Philip Woody wins the Nobody of the Week award this week. But... We'll go through some of the nominations. The first one was suggested to me by Nick from Australia. And it was by this person called Brower Joel. I'm guessing his real name's Joel Bra Brower, but he's just put it back to front. And he said, um, me top three modern day rivals, Eastern Suburbs, Melbourne, Canberra, Melbourne, Penrith and Parramatta. And uh, obviously a few people had a few words to see about that. Eastern Suburbs, Melbourne's not a rivalry. If if both of them weren't going for the premiership, what do they have in common? What what do they have to hear each other about? Or what do they have to compete over? Canberra and Melbourne, same thing. If if they weren't going for the the title, what where's the where's the sort of mutual hatred towards each other? And Penrith and Parramatta, uh I've been a Parramatta fan all my life and I know tons of Parramatta fans and none of them consider Penrith to be a rival. Um, I guess there's probably some Parramatta fans out there that do. But um, if, if you've actually lived in Sydney or know much about the geography of Sydney, Penrith's actually quite a bit of a drive from Parramatta. It's nowhere near Parramatta. Um, I still consider our rival to be Calgary Bankstown and I'll leave it at that. Um Next one comes from Jacob Kimbe, who replied to something I said with them. Um, because sometimes I post me link on sites and he said, can't understand the pommy. So for that ignorant comment, you get put in the Nobody of the Week award because, you know, or maybe it was a bad joke. Maybe he was trying to compare me to John Bateman or something like that. But um, he gets the Nobody of the Week nominee. Another uh, nominee was DVE11A, and this is on Instagram. Because I posted a, a thing saying, I sent me tipping video of no changes are made. Parramatta can expect possibly another loss against New Zealand. And then DVE11A says, I but we've changed we've made two changes and i went hey yeah but one of them was fast because dylan brown obviously can't play and the other one was um just a bench change and he went yeah nikari is in for andrew davy 
and I went, I don't think Davy was the player responsible for losing 39 now, or 38 nil, sorry. I think it was already 22 nil before he got on the field. And then he said, I but Nakari would have made a difference. No, he fucking wouldn't have. It, Murat and Nakari wouldn't have fucking changed the scoreline the other night, the other week against South. It wouldn't have mattered who we had on the field. We still would have lost 38 nil. I guarantee you. Um, the next nominee is an actual player and something that someone did in the game, and it goes to Lachlan Lewis of Canterbury Bankstown. He did score a try in the match the other day against the Gold Coast, but with a minute remaining, and I think it was either the the last tackle or the second last tackle, instead of maybe throwing the ball around or trying to score a long range try, Lachlan Lewis comes up with this strange grubber kick that goes five yards and Gold Coast dive on it, and that's the end of the game. So the likelihood of Canterbury winning the match was slim to none, but when you're one of your, um, you could see better players, and one of your playmakers does that with a minute to go. If if you were on the same team, you'd be going, "What the fuck have you done?" So Lachlan Lewis gets another, well, he gets a nomination. Nobody of the week. Um, this one goes to the next nomination goes to. I'm guessing you see it's Cohen Nichols because it, how it how it looks is it's it says Cowan Nichols but I'm I'm guessing Cohen Nichols. Now he, he's commented on a few things. He, he's an Eastern Suburbs supporter. He said some daft things in the past, but he said uh, each and every week Parramatta are helped by the referees. Each and every week, so even when we beat the Gold Coast by forty points and we beat Brisbane by thirty points, we were still being helped somehow just a daft thing to see and then I like how Brad Field chimes in and says lives in New Zealand from New Zealand follows roosters what a bandwagon <laughs> yeah, I, I like it when some other people chime in this uh, person said these names Chaddy Chafai he's another nominee Sevo I swear was made from biscuits Steve's down week in week out to get penalties, what a joke! And I went, "Who is Sevo?" And then uh, he was insinuating that he deliberately stays down all the time. And I went, "I kind of noticed the same thing last year, and no one said now last year. Maybe because we're winning more this year, I guess people are kind of bringing it up. But one look, one thing I'll see the use out there watching the video. You try being a, a winger, and." Carting the ball up or doing a hit up and running at two or three lads that weigh 100 kilo plus each and they're whacking you every time. It, it looks easy to watch it on the telly, but doing it in real life, sometimes even a, a tackle that looks like now it happened, sometimes we're not feeling the tackle, something could happen. Because I've seen it happen to some other players. It, it looks like an, a nothing tackle and then they're on the ground and you, we don't know what what it feels like to get hit by that well actually I do because I've played rugby league but most people out there wouldn't wouldn't know the the feeling of being crunched like that by people that weigh 100 kilo plus um, another nomination which actually um, it come in today and I think this is my last nomination for the the Noob Day of the Week video this week was uh, Josh Reynolds and Russell Packett it was reported that they left Brookfield Oval at half time when West were losing against Manly and they just jumped in their cars and drove home and they broke team protocol and I think they in some way spoiled the win um, which West had over Manly because everyone's coming off the sort of the good vibes and the euphoria from West coming back from that match and once again West are in the, in the media for the negative reasons once again I'm pretty sure both of these players will be moved on at the end of the year and I think demonstrated they demonstrated the the other day with with this behavior that they clearly don't want to be there and they don't give a fuck so um they get a nomination because I mean it's a daft thing to do why not just stay the full time whether whether you win or lose I mean you're on good money eight hundred thousand a year each I think 
So a, a daft thing from both players. Um, when I was going over me nobody of the week video that uh, last week, I went fuck because after I I posted, I went fuck. I missed out on two uh, nominations. The first one was Moses Mbai. He come out and said last week that uh, under underperforming players should should go from the West Tigers, and I'm thinking. Uh, You've been underperforming since you got there, pretty much. Um, besides the occasional good performance, you've been un underperforming since you got there. Like that—that's kind of like standing in a room and seeing the the person wearing the green shirt should be kicked or thrown out of the out of the room, and you've got a green shirt on. And uh, the other nomination I forgot to mention last week was once again. I heat the Parramatta Reels. We lost that game 38 nil the South. And within about a day, he posted about 10 memes and all this and saying, you know, I'd rather be anything in the world than a fucking Parramatta fan and all this. And I'm kind of going, Canterbury's coming last. We're in the top four. I mean, where's the sense in that? It's like uh, our lass's brother. He, he sent me a message going, ha oh, ha, fucking power map, that soak shit, all this keeper. I'm, I'm kind of going, Canterbury's last. Because he's a Canterbury fan. Canterbury's last. Shrug shoulders. No response because he probably went, yeah, fuck you, right, we are last. And I might retract that statement. But anyway, that's me Nubsy of the Week award for this week. This week it goes to uh, Philip Woods. The Canberra supporter who thought that the NRL already had some sort of conspiracy going on despite that it's a live ladder. So he wins me a award for this week. Anyways, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, click that like button. If you're enjoying the stuff that I'm doing on the channel, click that subscribe button. Share the videos out there. I'm over 200 subscribers as well. I'm pretty sure I thanked everyone that sent a nice message to me. Um, it's a massive achievement to be over 200 subscribers con considering the um, the technology and the stuff I've got at my disposal I think it's a it's, I think it's a great achievement 200 subscribers in just under five months so um, i dead pleased with that anyways everyone I'm going to get out of here and I uh, hope you enjoy your week and I'll catch us all later in the next video alright tatty bye